Good evening. I'm Ed Bradley. It's my pleasure to welcome you to Metro Arts 13 and to Birdland for a week of programs about my friend and colleague, Dr. Billy Taylor. In the jazz world, it's widely known that Billy wears many professional hats. He's a gifted pianist, he's a composer, an author, an educator, and a television and radio personality. And you could say that he has lived much of the history of jazz. This week, we're going to share with you a wide range of programs from the early days of television to right now that tell the story of Billy's involvement with America's classical music, jazz. Welcome, Billy. Thank you. It's good to see you and talk to you. Uh, it's the history of jazz that, that, that you have lived. I mean, uh, jazz doesn't have a long history. Actually, it does. Uh, we, it doesn't have a long recorded history. Uh, jazz was created uh, back in the early days of slavery. So we have coming from that point right up until when it actually formally uh, left the plantation and, and began to uh, uh, reach out to the uh, um, entire populace. Uh, I realized, began to realize this in Washington, D.C. Uh, I grew up uh, going to Dunbar High School. And Dunbar High School, when I was a student, uh, had five uh, teachers with doctorates on a high school faculty. And the only reason they were there was because they couldn't get a job in Yale and, and Harvard, places where they should have been teaching. Uh, but they really made sure that we knew about Charles Drew and that we knew about uh, people other than uh, athletes and, and, and musicians who had done significant things uh, historically. And uh, so uh, I felt that uh, there was uh, something very special that uh, happened in music. And I began to, uh, I was fortunate in being taught by uh, the uh, uh, Mary Reese Europe, who was the sister of James Reese Europe. Mm -hmm. And she gave us chapter and verse about Roland Hayes and about uh, all kinds of uh, musicians. I'm into jazz, but I'm, I'm hearing about the relationship between uh, people like James Reese Europe and uh, all of the people up here who I didn't consider jazz musicians, but I found out starting at that point that they had had an influence on Duke Ellington. And so when, you, when you're talking about uh, uh, Will Marion Cook, when you're talking about Will uh, 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 Vaudry, and you're talking about people, these are people who helped shape Duke Ellington uh, differently from the way other jazz musicians uh, uh, were shaping their careers. Being influenced by, by Ellington at a very early age through Henry Grant, who was my, one of my piano teachers, uh, I, I, I just, I began to early on put all this together. So when I came to New York, I, I was fascinated to meet uh, uh, people like Joe Jones and, and oh, that's another thing. Joe Jones, I was Joe Jones' protege. I'm a piano player, but he took, he, I had heard him when I was in college. He liked me when he found out I was working with his friend Big Sid Catlett uh, with, with uh, um, Ben Webster. Uh, he, he took me into his, uh, under his wing. Joe Jones would introduce me to Coleman Hawkins and Don Bias and people that I was anxious to meet like this. Um, Hawk, this is a young friend of mine from Washington, D.C. This is Billy Taylor. He can't drink. <laughs> now, <laughs> Now, I'm in a bar. I'm in the White, in the white Rose Bar where everybody is belting them down. I mean, a, a double scotch is 25 cents. So, I mean, every, you know, everybody is, is getting high. You know, I'm a frat man. I figured I can handle it, you know. Anyway, he know, Joe knows better than I. So he's setting me up so that I will not drink. Joe Jones uh, 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 introduced me with so many people like that that when I would go back to the bar alone and say, Mr. Hawkins, can I buy you a drink? He said, sure. He said, I'll have a double. He'll have a Coke. You know? <laughs> and the same thing with our Tatum. I take Tatum out to, to all of these uh, uh, um, after hour places, and we, we would go when he would play the piano and so forth. And he would be drinking boiler makers and, and so forth. I'd be drinking a Coke, because that's what he said I was supposed to have. And uh, so whenever I wasn't in that company, I, you know, I would. Not, I, I wasn't, I, I figured, hey, I can, I'm a man, I can, I'm over 21, I can drink, you know. And uh, uh, I was spanked very properly by Joe, by Joe who then said, uh, he saw me doing this in a bar. He came in where I was playing solo. The next night, I didn't know he came in. He came in, looked, saw me drinking, left. Next night he came in, and I'm playing the same, about the same time that evening. And I've had one or two and everything. 
I look up. Here's Joe sitting, looking directly at me. And on this side, he has Teddy Wilson, and this side, he has Art Tatum, and I'm paralyzed. <laughs> I can't play. Uh, these I are two of the great players. I have never, two of my biggest influences. Uh, I have never taken a drink uh, uh, when I'm going to play. I mean, I, I drink a, wine, a little wine or something now. Uh, but I have never, if I'm going to play, if, you will never see me take anything. Uh, and that was, for me, one of the healthiest things that anyone ever did for me. I mean, contrary to everybody that says this guy uh, taught me to smoke tea or do this or do that, uh, Joe was just the opposite for me. Because that's I'll not never... the image you have of music and musicians a lot. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and it was willful on his part, and I'm, I'm grateful to him. <laughs> you, you said that your first band, your first gig was with Ben Webster. Mm -hmm. And where did you go from there? How long did you uh, stay with Ben? I stayed with Ben for, for a while, and Dizzy Gillespie brought the fir first bebop band on the uh, uh, street. Uh, I wasn't lucky enough. I'd run across the street and jam with him, but I wasn't lucky enough. They started without a piano, and so everybody was running over playing. I almost lost my gig with, with Ben because I kept being late playing with, with Dizzy. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, he, he actually, I did lose the job. Sammy K fired me, and Ben said, well, you know, I understand. He won't do it again. Oh. <laughs> and I did it. Was it's it a, fun playing with Dizzy then? Oh, it was wonderful. He had uh, Max Roach, he had uh, uh, Oscar Pettiford, and uh, um, the, um, uh, let's see, uh, Max, Dizzy, Oscar Pettiford, and Don Bias. Mm -hmm. And they were awesome. I mean, I, that was when I learned that, you know, I learned those, those bebop tunes. He told me that when he learned this chord, uh, which is E flat 13th with a raised 11th, uh, he said, as soon as I heard that, I heard this melody. Uh, uh, and, and Dizzy was just full of things like that. He would he would take uh, uh, a simple, and just just little patterns where one note or two mo notes are moving. And uh, uh, I learned so much from from listening to him. And I realized that uh, he had worked with some of the pianists that uh, uh, you know whose work I admired, uh, Billy Kyle and a lot of uh, other people. So when you would listen, you'd, you'd sit in with Dizzy and you would, you would play with, he didn't have a piano player then, you'd I sit in with him right. and then you'd go back to your gig across the street. Right. What did you take with you? I mean, how did that shape you? Well, it just helped me uh, rhythmically to, to play from a different perspective because I was really trying to come to grips with the fact that I could do this. Use my left hand like that, uh, Teddy Wilson. You know, you know. So uh, uh, you can't do that when you got Oscar Pettiford playing melodies on the bass. I mean, you, you, get, you get out of his way. You know, you got to. <laughs> and so, so I, I. So I was I was beginning to do things along those lines, and I had to just really get up to this part of the piano. That was one of the things that, that Ben Webster liked about my playing. I had uh, heard Duke Ellington play uh, That was his introduction to In a Melatone, a tune that featured Ben Webster. And I liked the Now what that was uh, uh, fascinated me. I said, gee, that's a a really interesting way to, to play. I think I'll, I'll apply that to comping. So I began. So I was doing this when Ben Webster, who used to be a piano player in his earlier days, heard me play, and Ben said, hey, I like that. And he was the one that encouraged me back in 1944 to, to, to do things like that. I actually wrote a tune. I, I had met Thelonious Monk, and I wrote a tune uh, which I was learning to write bebop from him. I told you, uh, my my tune uh, was nowhere near what is. It's, it's called the Mad Monk. You know, so uh, that was kind of my tribute to Monk, and it was actually on my first record, mm -hmm. the, the very first record I ever did. Mm -hmm. uh, I, when I met Monk, uh, it was was an interesting uh, experience. I had uh, uh, come to New York to hear Teddy Wilson, who was my favorite player. 
Uh, he had a big band with Shorty Baker and Ben Webster. Ben Webster always comes up for me. I mean, he had Ben Webster and uh, uh, J.C. Hurd, wonderful band. So I'm going to here. My dad says, okay, I'll send you the, I'll give the money, I'll give you the money to go to New York, but you have to check in with a friend of mine who's a, who owns a nightclub because I don't want you wandering around New York. It, it, nobody knows where you are or anything. And so you check in with him and, and uh, it'll be all right. So I go in to see uh, this gentleman who is the manager of a nightclub in Harlem. And so the, uh, 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 he says, uh, uh, your dad tells me you play, uh, uh, play something for me. So I sit down and play my favorite tune of the, uh, of the time. It's called Lullaby and Rhythm. And I love that tune, I like the harmony. So I'm playing, and I'm, I'm doing my autatum, you know, running all over the piano and doing all kinds of stuff. And uh, I think it's, you know, I'm, I figured pretty good. I'm college. So, but, so uh, I noticed that the piano player, who had gotten up from his trio, from his seat in the trio to let me play, kind of looked at me strange when I, uh, strangely when I started to play. I thought it was because I was playing so well. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I, uh, I go back to the bar, and he plays the, his theme song and, and finishes his set. And he said, that was very nice, son. Um, uh, I have some friends that would like to hear you play. I said, oh, really? Oh, great, okay. Mm -hmm. And so he says, come on with me. He takes me around the corner. The club is the Yeah Man Club. It's on 7th Avenue. It's just mm -hmm. uh, 38th Street, I think it is, uh, uh, just off 30, 38th. We go around to 138th Street, mm -hmm. and we go into a brownstone. And there's several piano players. I don't know their piano players, but they're sitting around uh, in the room. And uh, he, uh, so I go on, he said, uh, hey fellas, I got a piano player here. Everybody kind of looks up mm -hmm. and they said, play something. So I, I play, I start, uh, now I'm gonna really show off. I, I, I'm, I'm playing the tune I was playing a minute ago, China Boy. I'm, I'm walking my tents and I think I'm pretty hot. Mm -hmm. uh, elderly gentleman comes over and he's got a derby and a big cigar. He said, let me try a little of that, son. I'm about 16 bars into the tune. This guy comes <laughs> His left hand sounds, one hand sounds like that, you know. I said, man. I have, I, you know, so, uh, I mean, he sat down and he played, and uh, another guy who I didn't know came in, and he played something, and he had a terrific left hand. Uh, then the third guy, who was closer to my age, sits down, and he starts playing... Um, He's playing it's a Stallonius Monk, Ooh. but he sounds like Art Tatum. Mm -hmm. So he plays uh, maybe 16 bars like that. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, Willie yells over from the corner, Monk, I told you, we got an Art Tatum. Play your thing. <laughs> I mean, I, and, and you know, and, and, and so this was uh, the first piano session that I've ever, uh, a major session that I'd ever been in like that. I'd been in sessions in Washington, D.C. where, you know, you had other players and everything. But this but was New York. This was when New you York. talked about being slapped and, down, this oh is one of those man, times I mean, where you I mean, down. I went home and practiced like crazy. <laughs> <laughs>